What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're here for another episode of Let's Talk Dynasty and our Dynasty Trade Review Show. As you guys know, it's week 14 of the fantasy football season. Those Sunday games, they happen tomorrow. But a lot of fantasy teams, they're still trying to get the pieces together to make a playoff push, specifically in your Dynasty Fantasy Football teams. So we have these Dynasty trades, some contending, some rebuilding. Some people still trying to figure it out. It's week 14, baby. Let's get that shit together. We can't do this trade review show without our co-host mfgd so let's make sure we get him into the building let's start talking some dynasty trades or how we doing today hey man we doing good back from the holidays ready to get these trades kicked off yes sir so for the people at home technical difficulties we are on the second rerun only we were only about five minutes in so you know second time in it but we're gonna do it right the second time for sure we got to trade up on the screen right now 12 team super flex ppr tight end premium and a start 10 luke wanted us to know that he is a rebuilding roster now he gets tucker craft in his rebuild he trades away isaac garendo in a 2025 third round pick obviously these guys are a little bit popular because Garendo just had some increase in value with Christian McCaffrey and Jordan Mason going to IR. Tucker Craft, he's kind of been balling out in the absence of Luke Musgrave. I think a lot of people are excited about Tucker Craft. How do you feel about a tight end premium league trading away Garendo and a third to go get Tucker Craft? Um, I like it. I actually um lean the Tucker Craft side all the way. I think Tucker Craft has the makings of um a long term tight end. I think he's supplanted Luke Musgrave because it's because in the beginning beginning when these guys both came in together it seemed like it was going to be Musgrave who was going to be the tight end to own in Green Bay but now it seems like it's Tucker Craft and um he's done well enough with his opportunity to where he shouldn't have to give it back could still be some touches and some targets for Musgrave but I think Tucker Craft's the guy there um as far as trading uh Garendo in a third form I would say it's closer to fair than unfair I'm just personally in the tight end side because I feel like that has more long-term value i don't see garendo unless garendo comes out and just put puts excellent tape you know for the rest of the season out there i don't see garendo being like this guy that you could go into 2025 with locked and loaded as your running back to or something like that i don't, I don't think that's gonna happen i think he's gonna probably but then again you never know with the 49ers running back room you never know who's gonna still be healthy <laughs> going into 2025 who's gonna be there um but yeah he's a short-term piece a third round pick you know, it's a third round pick. You know, it's hit and missed in that round. Um, you can get somebody in a third round, but as we said here before, this isn't the the strongest draft in the world um coming up. So, but yeah, I'm leaning the Tucker Craft side. Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. I was actually having a conversation the other day about, you know, best case scenario for Isaac Grendo. And I, I think when you're looking at this short term, like Grendo's the best asset. I think he's going to score the most points from right now all the way to the fantasy championship. Uh, I think he'll outscore Tucker Craft. But Tucker Craft's a better dynasty asset. When it comes to the best scenario for Grendo to me, I'm looking at a guy who, if he goes out there and let's say he goes he goes nuts, you know, let's say he puts out 15 plus fantasy points this week, 15 plus another week, another 15 points. Like he goes out and gives us three or four weeks of just 15 or more fantasy points because he He's running for 100 yards and getting into the end zone. I think best case scenario is that Isaac Grendo did enough that he surplants Jordan Mason as RB2 on the depth chart and he backs up Christian McCaffrey next year. So like in the perfect world for Grendo, I feel like at best he becomes a handcuff, whereas he was the handcuffs handcuff right now. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I think this is a guy I would definitely be willing to get out on. If people in your league are excited about him, maybe you're not a contending roster and you don't need Grendo. If you're a contending roster, keep Grendo because he's going to score points down the stretch. But if you're you're not I mean anybody willing to give me a late second he's out of here you know quicker than I can I can get him off my team for a second round pick you know he's a guy that I, I'd be willing to trade and get creative like this one where you throw a little extra piece on top you go get an upgrade at the tight end position where in a tight end premium league it's gonna be a little bit better but to me Garendo he's a guy who's benefiting from opportunity and uh I think you know best case scenario is he he goes out and balls and uh he earns the job as Christian McCaffrey's backup next year because let's just be honest, Christian McCaffrey's contract, it says that CMC is the guy until CMC can literally no longer play football for them anymore. And the PCL not being related to the Achilles tendonitis doesn't make me super worried about Christian McCaffrey week one next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McCaffrey's going to be there. Garendo, his best case scenario is as the um, the handcuff. And that's like, and that's assuming that he's going to just come in and supplant um, Elijah Mitchell and, yeah. um, 
and Jordan Mason. So and assuming that they don't draft another running back in this deep running back class this year, which they are very prone to do. But on the other hand, also assuming that Kyle Shanahan is still a coach. So <laughs> I can't imagine he gets fired. But let's let's move on to the next one. Um, speaking of 49ers, we got another 49er right here. Uh, 12 team super flex, full PPR, tight end premium. Team number one is contending. They trade away TJ Hawkinson in a 2025 second round pick. They get George Kittle. So uh, obviously this year it feels like if you don't have Brock Bowers and you don't have George Kittle, eh, those are pretty much the only two tight ends that matter right now is what it feels like. But TJ Hawkinson, we know he was recovering from the ACL tear. We know that when he's fully healthy, he is a player that is one of the better tight end positions is or, or one of the better tight ends at the position. Knowing that you're throwing a second round pick on top of that are you willing to do that to go get george kittle that's a fair trade that's a fair trade am i gonna do it no i'm not gonna do it because my assumption is that my feeling is that fully healthy tj hawkinson is better than george kittle but that's just my opinion on it so putting a second on top of that just seems a little excessive excessive um as but if we're talking today but this is dynasty so we're not just talking today so i'm leaning i'm leaning the the tj hawkinson side on this one because George Kittle you know for several reasons I love George Kittle one he loves the Bears two he's just an excellent tight end three he loves wrestling he's like the tight end made for for war he's war's tight end MFG <laughs> deeds is tight end um but he's older and Hawkinson yeah. is proven and I think a lot of people have Hawkinson messed up because he had an injury last year and he's still working his way back into form but make make no mistake this is a top five tight end when fully healthy this is a tight end in the kevin o'connell offense and he's gonna ball out um regardless so and he's a younger piece so i will lean that side as much as i love george kittle but if you're a contender then that's trying to go for it right now this season then yeah go with george kittle yeah i mean I I wish people could go back and, I mean, you can go back if you want to find it. I don't know where it's at, but I, there was a long time where I was telling people that, like, to me, TJ Hawkinson was a 2025 play. Like, I didn't believe he was going to be 100% till 2025. Um, So anything that we get this year is bonus to me because uh, he's just, it takes a while, man, to recover from that, that type of knee injury that he had. That was a tough knee injury, man. It, it was two surgeries, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It was, it's just, tough man we saw Chris Godwin Chris Godwin had the same type of injury and he had a really down year that first year back from the ACL and then what did he do this year you know he came out and he had a good year until he got hurt again uh, but TJ Hawkinson 2025 should be fine I think you're right when you look at a value standpoint in a dynasty format the value of this trade is on the Hawkinson in the second side. But when you say that team number one is a contender, they're trying to go win a championship. I think a second round pick is a very small asking price to throw into TJ Hawkinson to get me a guy in George Kittle that I feel like can help me win a championship right now this year over the next couple of weeks. So uh, I think it's a good trade. It's a fair trade. You're right. A fair deal for both parties. The value's on the Hawkinson side, but George Kittle is the most likely to win you the championship. So I think this trade accomplished what both parties probably wanted to do. Yep, I agree. All right, well, let's go on to trade number three. Trade number three, we got some Chase Brown. Brown, uh, 10 team, super flex, full PPR and start 10. They said the first round pick is early. He said bottom three. I'm assuming that means early, like the bottom of the first round. Uh, we'll see what that means. Maybe he corrects us in the comment. But Spencey, he gets uh, Chase Brown, a 26 second and a 26 second as well. So two of those. Hmm. He gives up a bottom first round pick. So maybe it's the 101 to 103. Maybe by bottom, he means back end. I, I, I don't know. That probably back end makes more sense. But how do you feel about that? I, first of all, when... When he says bottom three, do you think that means early or late? Late. Okay, well, I'm looking at the trade. It feels like late makes more sense. So let's because just operate with late. Look at the trade. I'm telling you now, if that's a top three pick, he just you finessed. Lost. Yeah. <laughs> <I hate. laughs> but when that's a top three pick. But even if it's a bottom three pick, I'm still taking the first round pick side. Because me, personally, man, I I think I think Brown is mid, man. I think like he's a replacement level running back, but that's just me. That's just me. To me, he's a placeholder. To me, they didn't really want to get rid of Mixton, but you know, they didn't want to go out and get a running back anyway. So he's a place holder until they come and find another running back and this is a good running back draft so that's how I view Chase Chase Brown and then you're throwing in two seconds from 2026 which probably you know lights Andrew's ass on fire because it's 2026 um <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and you're getting the first round pick back. So I'm leaning the first round pick side, man, no matter where it lands in the first round. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I just wish we would have used early or late as the lingo rather than bottom slash top. Uh, I guess bottom is probably back end. So let's just let's just be real here. Ted McMillan is not going to be available. He's the guy on the on the graphic. But I think if it's a late first round pick, to me, if you're a contending roster, I'm okay with the late first being traded for two seconds in Chase Brown because I think Chase Brown is going to be like league winning potential. I think what he's going to do the rest of the way, uh, he's going to score 20 plus points a game. It feels like um, if that wins you a championship, that wins you a championship, cost you a late first round pick. I don't believe that the late first rounders in this year's class are much different than the second rounders in this year's class uh, the early guys like there's not a big difference it feels like to me after you get past like 106 107 there's like a tier of like 10 guys that are all the damn same and, and that's just the way that it's looking like to me so my strategy that i'm using this year most likely is once we get closer to draft and once we start seeing pro days and and some of these other things that happen combine performances and senior bowls people are going to get excited i'm gonna trade out of all my late first round picks i will not be picking a single player in the late first round at all i'll move all of those back for two seconds three seconds a first next year and a second this year and feel like i'm getting the same damn players so um I think for me, it's a guy that he's going to help you win this year. I don't mind the trade. When when it, when it was, assuming it was an early one, I was with you where it's like, brother, we ain't doing that trade. I've taken Ted McMillan 100 times out of 100 times over Chase Brown. So uh, I think that one was, was different. But yeah, if you're looking at late, I think there's an argument you go to Chase Brown on the second side. Just because after like pick five, six, seven in this year's draft, it feels very much like they're all kind of the same type of talent. Um, the running back that you can get at 107 or 108 is going to be the same running back you can get at 204 that's just the way that i feel mm. so i don't know interesting it's a very it's a very deep draft very deep draft a nice draft to flesh out your your roster and like fill some holes but you might not necessarily get the dom Studs. well let's be honest every, every draft has a stud that we don't know about like a guy who sure. like just looks unassuming but becomes a stud like who the hell knew bucky Irvin was gonna like become a stud like yeah, um but and, Puka um, and all these guys yeah yeah but um yeah i think that's a good strategy um and i think that's why i think you know this guy's probably coming out okay but if you're a contender then i could see why you're like trying to grab chase brown for sure but he didn't he didn't tell us if he was a contender or a rebuilder or whatever so we don't know that context but uh let's just hope let's just hope that by bottom he didn't mean early because if it's early then yeah that's a whole different story uh let's move on to the next one we got Song to Song in a 12-team Superflex, full PPR, and a tight end premium. Song told us he's retooling. So, you know, he's trying to get a little bit younger. He's trying to, you know, fix some of these positions here because he just has been old, injured, and underperformed. He gets Bo Nix. He gives up Tua in a second. Are you trading Tua in a second for Bo? I'm trying to figure out why I'm trading the second and Tua when this deal should be straight up, in my opinion. I'll tell you what that is. That 2025 second is. That's co uh, concussion insurance. That's what that is yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i mean yeah <laughs> yeah man that's uh yeah that's all that's the only way i could look because i was looking like okay these guys are pretty pretty similar like in terms of like value in my opinion bo nick probably more value yeah maybe um but yeah that second is definitely concussion insurance because oh, if i'll never play again at least i can say i got a second for bo nix so i mean yeah that's the only a way i can really look at it a lot of people had the ability to draft bo at like the 201 202 range uh in this year's draft because it was just so deep but um look i agree with you man i i, I think i'm taking the bow side for me it's just you get younger. Technically, Bo's an older prospect, but he's younger than Tua. Um, and I think you eliminate risk. Uh, this is this feels like somebody who's eliminating risk. I also think he said too that uh, he's an Oregon Ducks fan, and so he was like a Bo Nix fan in college, and so he was like just willing to throw the second if it got the deal done uh, because he just wanted the player. Which I'm not, I ain't mad at that. Um, but yeah, I think you eliminate risk. Tua, he's as good of a player as he is, and and people are gonna hear Tua and I say good player, and they're gonna. I think some people are gonna grimace. Tua is a a good football player. He he's good for fantasy football the problem is you know we we all know it's kind of a ticking time bomb right like mm -hmm. it's it's inevitable that i think Tua receives another concussion it's inevitable whether it be a year from now six games from now next week you know god forbid it's gonna happen like he's gonna get another one and the fear is that when that happens you know he stops playing football i think that's what everybody fears i'm not saying that i believe that 
he's going to stop playing football if he gets another one. I'm just saying that we know that another concussion is inevitable. And if you are trading and eliminating risk, Bo Nix, I'm not worried about Bo Nix's career being over. You know, <laughs> like uh, I think this guy's yeah. career has just started. He has rushing upside. He's playing with Sean Payton. We've talked about how, you know, we feel like the offense can get better next year. You know, Corlin Sun plus a rookie wide receiver that we think is actually legitimate. It's not Devon Vele or Marvin Mims or or whatever. Like, hopefully Troy Franklin steps up, you know, whatever it may be. I just believe that Bo Nix is the better player. There's more upside with Bo Nix um, in my fantasy football team. So I'm okay giving the second round pick to eliminate the risk. But I, I fully agree with the statement where I look at this trade and I say, this is a fair deal. You know, I, nobody wins, nobody loses. This is a fair deal. But I think I prefer the bow side just because there's less risk and probably a higher ceiling. Yeah, I prefer the bow side as well. Um, I just think there's a lot more ceiling there, a lot more shelf life there. So, yeah, I would definitely lean bow next. And the production is, has been similar to or better than Tua. So, yes, yeah, bow next. Are you worried at all that if Mike McDaniel ends up losing his job, Job, which I've seen it floated around slightly not that he's going to lose his job this year but like some people are saying like hey Mike McDaniel hasn't been as advertised you know a lot of people were talking about him as like this offensive genius they've underperformed a lot of that has to do with Tua not being on the football field but if the Dolphins do decide you know maybe next year's a down year Tyreek you know isn't Tyreek of old because he's getting a little bit older are you worried that if Mike McDaniel goes Tua's pretty much done as QB1 in Miami I'm worried about all the Dolphins if Mike McDaniel's done because the true the heart true reality to it is that Tua has not supported two wide receivers this season. Yeah. The running backs are doing fine. And I really, when it comes to Mike McDaniel, I really have a hard time understanding why that's happening. I don't know if you have any ideas, but I don't understand why all of a sudden he can't support 2,000 yard wide receivers when he's done it before. He's he's had Waddle and Tyreek, you know, booming at the same time. But now, and at first I was like, okay, he had the concussion. He back, he's back a couple games. It'll level out. He'll start to, to look like the office will start to look the same. But it's just not. It just and it has it's this has been a whole season thing. So yeah, I, I have no idea as to why the Jalen Waddle mystery is the way that it is right now. Like he legitimately, like I, I say this as I'm not even joking when I say this. I don't even know if the motherfucker's on the field half the time that I'm watching the game. Like where the hell are you, Jalen Waddle? Like, you're not even involved. Like, they're not even targeting you. It's not even like we're targeting you, you're dropping the football, not making plays. No, we don't even look your way. Jonu Smith is out here catching 10, 10 passes a game, and we don't even look at you. Like, it, it's crazy That's what sad. is happening with Jalen Waddle. It, in fact, though, he's probably a buy low. If we're talking about buys and sells, he's probably a buy low because I think a lot of people feel the way that we feel where it's like, where the hell are you, Jalen? I still would be buying him. Um, But at the end of the day, it's... Your guess is as good as mine as to why he is not being involved in this offense. I have to assume. I don't even know what to assume. I would say I would say I have to assume that there's maybe an injury that we're not we don't know about. But at the same time, like I don't want to give the guy a pass just because you know he's not performing. See, but see, what, what I want to do is I want to take this back to a tour thing, right? So it might not appear on the surface. Maybe it's not a Jalen Waddle and or sometimes even Tyreek because sometimes Tyreek hasn't even been putting up these Tyreek Tyreek performances. Maybe it's a tour thing because. It almost seems like he's reverting back to like that rookie mindset of let me just dump it off to the tight end or even like a, a, a idea of we got to get the ball out faster, which he's one of the fastest when it comes to that, getting the ball out. Let me just get it to the tight end real quick, you know, so he doesn't get hit or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just it's, it's a mystery to me because even when he had in the field. Yeah. When he had Mike Jasicki, I, I, I guarantee there's people who play this, this fantasy football they're like damn when i had mike jasicki why wasn't he targeting him as much as john o. smith like yeah. like i mean all credit to john o. smith he in my opinion is, has always been just like an average tight end all yeah. of a sudden he's getting 10 targets a game like he's like brock bowers or like somebody like that so i don't know what the hell's going on i honestly don't even think at this point i don't even think it's a matter of Jalen Waddle not performing the way he should be. I think it's the way the offense is designed, and that feel and that feels like a two and a Mike McDaniel thing. One hundred percent, I agree, one hundred percent. But um, when it comes down to the trade, you know, give me Bo. 
and uh, yeah. we'll go from there. Uh, I think the next trade here, 12 teams, super flex, PPR, tight end, premium, start 10. Luke is at it again. He said he's eliminated from playoffs, and so he sold Josh Jacobs. Um, he sold Jacobs, and he got Dak Prescott injured, obviously, on IR. Ramondre Stevenson in his 2025 third-round pick. I mean, what do you think, War? Because in, a, in an eliminated situation here, you're trading your running back in a super flex league for Dak Ramondre and a third? That's yeah. no brainer, right? Yeah, like and I'm laughing as I'm doing it. I'm laughing as I hit this up. The person he's tra- it has to be a situation where the person he's trading Jacobs to has to be completely decimated at running back to trade away that much for a running back. That's the only and he has to have a, another quarterback that he believes in it could be his long-term qb2 he has to be but then he's trading away a running back at the same time i don't know what the hell's going on andrew but let me ask you this question because i just i'm curious <laughs> season's over you know everybody's healthy we're back at square one going into 2025 you're in a dynasty startup draft dak prescott and josh jacobs are both on the board you have to draft one in your startup who are you drafting dak okay so you get ramondre in the third thrown in for freebies if you're going dak over jacobs in a startup draft next summer um I- I think I agree with you, too. I mean, it comes down to Josh Jacobs has played some good ball. He's going to play yeah. some good ball the rest of the way. Um, oh, yeah. It's just it's just going to be the way that it is. Josh Jacobs also, though, is a running back. Yeah. Approaching the running back age cliff on his second contract mm-hmm. with a lot of carries on the body. Yep. Perfect piece to win you a championship this year. But every mm-hmm. year moving forward, I'm like, all right, you know, I feel like I'm on borrowed time with the running back. Yeah. You know, Dak Prescott for me, we got what, four more years, five more years of him probably being QB1. If it ain't in Dallas, it's somewhere else. Yeah. So I, I just feel like Dak Prescott, he's been an injured player this year, he hasn't performed, he's been underperforming, whatever. 12 team, super flat. Flex. The QB position is even more important in the 12 team format because not everybody can hold three QBs on the roster. You know, there ain't 36 quarterbacks to go around. Mm-hmm. That feels like you just got him thrown in pretty cheap. And I think he said it in the context was Luke was like, I like Jacobs, but the value that I got just was too good to pass up. And this is what it feels like to me, just too good a value to pass up. Like I said, I love Jacobs. He's going to be a, a guy that helps people win a lot of championships. I think a lot of people who have Josh Jacobs on their teams are going to be playing deep into the playoffs. Prescott and Stevenson. Steve, I don't even care about Stevenson in the third. It, to me, it's like Jacobs for Prescott. I feel like I like Prescott here. Oh, have 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 the mighty have fallen. I mean, Stevenson at this point. I remember when Stevenson was like considered like, oh man, this is running back. Yeah, now he's just guy. like a yeah. Now he's just a you know throw in to a trade. This trade is a pretty easy man. It's a pretty simple trade for me. I don't care how much Jacobs is balling. You know, he, I, he, there's no secret. If you watch the show regularly, you know, like Jacobs is just uh, cool to me, but he is having a very cool stretch right now. And I think he's a Green Bay running back. And there is the weather's getting cold, so he's gonna he's gonna be rumbling. Um, 100%. but at the end of the day, his value comes nowhere close to the value of a guaranteed starting quarterback and and a replacement running Dak, back. And a replacement running back. Dak, let me tell you about Dak. Dak is one of these guys. Now I don't want to compare him to Kayla Wood because you guys are like, oh, he always brings it back to the Bears. He's a Bears fan. <laughs> but let me so <laughs> Like Dak is is a unique case too, where it's like people just hate Dak for being Dak. Do you agree with that? Do you agree? Bro, Dak, with- I think Dak is one of the most overhated quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. And while I think, and I compared to Caleb because there's a lot of people that just it, the similarity I'm trying to point out is there's people out there, and, and I've seen them. I know you've probably seen them that will tell you right now that yeah, what Caleb has put on tape, he's a bust. But then when you really grill them on it, actually start throwing numbers and shit in them that goes to well he paints his fingernails like so I, I think it's just like my point is like hating hating a guy in fantasy just to hate a guy and i think but unlike caleb i think that when it comes to Dak, it seeps into his trade value like guys are quick to uh trade him away and i've never understood that if Dak is on your roster he's in a good spot he's the perfect guy to have as like a qb2 i wouldn't i 100%. mean qb2 that will that can regularly give you QB1 performance. If you're in a position where Dak is your QB2, you're in a very good position. Um, So I just don't know why guys will willfully throw him away. There's no way I'm trading Dak straight up for like a running back. I'm trying to think of one. Like, I would even have a hard time trading Dak for Derrick Henry. Saquon, I'll probably do that, man. E- even though it goes against my... It's just such a, it's such a big upgrade at the moment. Yeah, like Saquon, that, that would be, it would be pretty hard, but yeah, man, the, 
I, that to, to make long story short, yeah, I'm taking a Dak Prescott side. Yeah, I just I'm gonna add one more little piece of context to the to the argument as to why, because I, I feel like sometimes I want to make sure that people understand the process as to why I would take that side of the trade, because people want to figure out you know what our process is. That way, when they make trades, they're thinking at least a little bit differently. Um, when I look at Dak Prescott, like he's 31 years old, right? Like quarterback wise, you get past 30 and everybody's like, yeah, they're all the same. Who cares about 30 year old quarterback? Blah, blah, blah. You got a long time to play football past 30 in the NFL. Yeah. L- let's just, I, I want to compare Dak, and this is not going to be the most appealing comparison ever, but like if you looked at Dak, Prescott's and Kirk Cousins careers. Kirk Cousins is 36 years old. Dak Prescott is 31. So let's say you're buying, you know, the last five years. I think Dak's a better quarterback than Kirk Cousins when they're both on the football field. But let's just assume you're buying five years of Kirk Cousins production at worst from Dak Prescott. The last five years for Kirk Cousins, he was QB 11, QB 11, QB 6, QB 24. That was the year that he tore the Achilles. And then this year he was QB 20. So you get three seasons of fringe QB 1 performances and then two QB 2 performances. I mean, in a super flex league, bro, like if I can plug in Dak as my QB two for three years and he's giving me fringe QB one numbers, like you mentioned, that's a steal, dude. That's a steal. Josh Jacobs five years from now is not going to be producing RB two numbers for you, let alone probably even RB three numbers for you. Like it's just the longevity of it. And I get it. You know, Jacobs on a team that's contending, he's probably going to give you a lot of firepower, but I'm just not very eagerly throwing in my starting quarterbacks in a 12 team super flex. And when you can buy them for value like this makes sense to me. I'm going to take the Dak Prescott side. Yeah, I'm right there with you. All right, let's move on to the next one. We got a trade here, 12 team super flex, full PPR tight end premium Team number one is contending. They receive Justin Jefferson and Troy Franklin, but they give up Rashi Rice, Brian Thomas, and a 2025 first round pick. I think the 2025 first round pick is late, assuming that they are a contending team. So uh, a late first, Rashi and Brian Thomas for JJ, Troy Franklin to me, take him out of the deal, doesn't even matter. But um, how you feeling? I really don't like any trade where you're trading away Justin Jefferson. Yeah. In fact, man, you know what, man? I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand on. I'm gonna stand on all ten, man. I'm a, I'm, I'm I'm sticking with the Justin Jefferson side. You can give me Rasheed Rice. You can give me Ray Rice. You can give me Jerry Rice. You can give me Fry Rice. Damn. You can give me all the Rices. I'm t- I'm sticking with the JJ side, man. Like I don't know who Brian Thomas quarterback is gonna be. I don't know if he's gonna be good, even though he still seems to be decent. Um, uh, Rasheed Rice, you know, whatever. I mean, he he's gonna ball out. He's got he has. I ain't really worried about his quarterback situation. Mm. And the first is nice. I'm just not trading JJ, bro. Like, I'm just not. I'm just not trading him. And you're getting Troy Franklin thrown in. We don't know. That's still up in the air. But I'm just going to just be – I'm just going to be very stubborn and just not (laughs) – even acknowledge what I'm getting in return. I'm going to take JJ. And I say this to to tell all the viewers, do not trade Justin Jefferson. You have no reason to. He's a stud. He's already a Hall of Famer. And I'm talking like I'm the Vikings fan here. So, hey, <laughs> hey, I can't, I can't disagree with the he is already a Hall of Famer statement. Sorry, no, I could just uh, appreciate, I could just appreciate somebody that cooked one of the best cornerbacks in the league that's on my team. So, so yeah. Hey, look, I, I mean, I totally agree with you, Justin Jefferson. I don't want to sit here and you know I, you, you're gonna make me start you know being a, a homer here too, but. I, we're literally looking at a future legend of the sport, like when we're watching Justin Jefferson. It's just when you have Justin Jefferson on your team, for me, I, there ain't no price that I would pay really to get him off of the roster. Like you'd have to send me the godfather offer. Like I would need to have your firstborn child, you know, written into this. Like you got to you got to give me next to kin. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the that's the offer that I need, bro. Um, This is a this is a great deal, I think, in terms of value of what you get back. I think a lot of people wouldn't be willing to give this type of value to go buy Justin Jefferson. So, yeah, you give up Rashi, you give up Brian Thomas, you give up the first round pick. If you're rebuilding roster, I 100 percent totally understand why you would say I can break my Justin Jefferson down into three starting assets for me that are all young. I understand that. Um, As team number one, who who posted this trade, I'm also 1 billion percent willing to throw you my Brian Thomas Jr. and my Rashi Rice and my late first round pick to go get Justin Jefferson on a contending roster. Because quite frankly, there's only one other dude probably in the conversation with Justin Jefferson as as the best fantasy football wide receiver, and his name's Jamar Chase. Like Those are probably the only two guys in the conversation. And Mm -hmm. so, look, I, I... I think the trade makes sense for both sides, assuming that side number two is is rebuilding. But I still, I probably would have still asked him, "Hey, throw me another first.
first. Let me get that 2026 first thrown yes. in as well. Like yes, yes. I would, so I agree. Yeah, that's where I'm at. But I, I I understand. You know, if you don't feel the way that we do about Justin Jefferson, I mean, you probably need to reevaluate what you're watching on the football field every week. But also, like, I understand why you would take the other side. My my logic for trading away guys that are like bona fide studs. I'm talking about JJ Chase, Josh Allen, um, guys I mean, like the, that. The players you are listing, we're talking like when people throw it around every year in the draft cycle. But the players you're listing, we're talking about truly generational talent yeah yeah i think and i think i think when you're trading away one of those guys the fix the fixed value in return you have to come into the deal already with two or three first round picks like already in your holster to even get a seat at the table that's just my logic when it comes to guys like that when it's if it's josh allen you better have three first round picks already in the holster and be ready to discuss to what other value you're going to give me on top of those three first round picks because at the end of the day all of those first round picks combined i'm just looking for a guy that could possibly come close to josh allen so those yeah. those first shouldn't even be considered like you know and people act like first are blood diamonds when they're trading away like oh no i got no man there's no way i'm trading that many first if you have to trade three first to get josh allen you 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 do it and then and, and you're also thinking about what else can I give this person and that's kind of how I look at it here so that is some decent value that he's getting back in his deal but one I'm giving away another young receiver and you didn't come into the trade with the fixed first two first round picks that I would expect it so technically we shouldn't even be able to see this trade because I would have never gave you a seat at the table because you Fair. didn't have the tickets to get to see the tape. You had one ticket, you need two. So Fair enough. Look, I remember earlier this offseason, I went to beat up in one of the trades that we were in. He has Josh Allen. and He he kept throwing Josh Allen on the block, kind of like, hey, if somebody wants to come overpay for this, you know, let me know. Because he wasn't really shopping him, right? It was just like, if somebody yeah. wants to overpay, let me know. And I remember I went and I tried to get a seat at the table. And uh, I think it was in the offseason, so obviously keep in mind values were a little bit different. Um, but I went there and I said, I got Brian Thomas Jr., I got Trevor Lawrence and I got two first round picks for Josh. What are we doing here? And he didn't even let me sit down at the table. I, it was just like, <laughs> nah, I'm good. Thanks though. Like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, dude. I, like, I, I thought I was coming with a lot of value. I mean, I thought, you know, here's a QB, here's a wide receiver that's young, drafted in the first round this year, plus two more first. It didn't even get a seat at the table. So I just wanted to put that out there to show you, you know, again, like when you're talking about these generational, these like legitimate, 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 legitimate first round startup dynasty assets, like you got to come with the Godfather offer. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that this one, this is, it's a gr- it's a really good offer. It's not a Godfather offer, so I'll take the Justin side. Yeah, and and even in one of the leagues, man, you were in, and you mentioned this in the other in one of our videos. Uh, Could have been our most recent one. Like we're in a league where I'm probably going to have one one of one and a late pick, and I'm going to go around and I'm going to shop those two first round before I make those picks I'm gonna take a shot at every single generational player I could get like because Angel probably be like yeah don't bother my team you're not getting my generational guys with those two picks especially since you're the one that that came up with the idea to move the yeah. picks to get, like but everybody else especially like like uh pick junkies like Matt <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 hey, here. you know, here's guaranteed Gene T plus a young first round pick guy, you know, later in the draft for yeah. Jamar. Here's a Gene T plus a young first round guy for your Amara St. Brown or, you know, what I'm, you know, those elite, elite players and just see what happens, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I threw Amon Ra in there, and I feel like you didn't like that I threw Amon Ra in that conversation. Oh, uh, no, I like, I like Amon Ra. I like Amon Ra. He's Fair. disrespectful, but I like him. Fair. All right, well, let's move on to the next trade. Uh, we're going to go to this 12-team Superflex PPR and tight end premium. AMR said that they are in first place in points four in their contending roster, so they're trying to go win a championship. Uh, they get Derrick Henry and Janu. They trade mm. Devonta Smith and Jalen Warren. Um, definitely a contending move. You get an older Derrick Henry. You get Janu Smith, who is a short, probably window guy dynasty wise but he's scoring a lot of points right now so hey what can you do about it you give up a young guy in Devonta Smith who I think a lot of people have cooled on but I still like him Jalen Warren who was a darling last year but I think a lot of people have cooled on him too um how are we feeling about these two guys and and I guess this trade in general man dude I'm gonna be honest Ooh. 
No, okay, first let me get the easy stuff out the way. Getting Henry and John o. Smith, totally, totally the right move if you're going for it and you're a contender. That's not even what I'm debating here. What I'm debating here is would I rather have an older Henry and an older John o. Smith on my team instead of Devonta Smith? Now, I like Devonta. Do not get me wrong. But if Henry could keep this up for, and I feel like this is a big stretch, two more seasons. Yeah. And and John Lou Smith, well, let, let, okay, let's just make it even. If they could keep it up two more seasons. And when Henry, we're talking, about, talking about this year and next. No, I'm talking about next, two more 25 and 26. Shit, bro. I don't think Henry's doing that. Okay, but okay. Everybody's okay. been saying that for Henry for what, like three years? For a long now? time. Okay, okay. Get this, get this. Andrew, can you see a scenario where Derrick Henry, the next two seasons, right? Let's say that it's clear that he he's in decline. Now he is a Baltimore Raven. They have no issues bringing in another running back so let's say in this upcoming draft they draft a young running back who is explosive who could get who could take more carries what if the next two seasons henry just strictly becomes a short yardage back yeah do you think that still makes him yeah do you still think that makes him a running back too yeah i mean he'd be a running back too simply off of touchdowns um because i still think he'd be a guy who gets double digit touchdowns a year but yeah, I, I think if if they bring in another running back that's like taking work between the 20s, Henry's value shot in Dynasty. Yes. Okay, whereas you would say Devonta would still be rolling after two seasons from now. I, I mean, I don't see Devonta's value changing, really, outside of any. I mean, there's really, uh, like, drastic... I know I just bumped that, but drastic like career type of injury for Smith. I'm talking like Achilles tear or something like that. Outside of that, I don't see his value changing at all. Like the quarterback's going to stay the same with AJ Brown. I mean, the quarterback's going to stay the same with Jalen Hurts. AJ Brown's still going to be there. You know, it's like nothing's changing. I think it's going to be a good Eagles team for two more years. I just don't see anything changing with Devontae. And in fact, he just got an extension as well. So Devontae's going to be locked in there for a while. Why do you think, why do you think the the dynasty community has kind of turned on Devontae? Smith. Um, I, I'll tell you why. I think it's because one, uh, you had that rookie season where he kind of flirted with uh those wide receiver one numbers. He out targeted AJ Brown, uh, his rookie season, and then ever since then, it's kind of just been AJ Brown established himself as the alpha in the offense. Uh, and so I think a lot of people got that like first glimpse of what Devonta could be, and they thought maybe he was a wide receiver one for fantasy teams, and now he's just kind of been a wide receiver two, a really good wide receiver two. But I think that got expectations for him out of the you know blown out of the water and i think people cooled off on that um i also think people they get bored of boring production and that's why you see guys like chris olave that people are just like i hate chris olave and you get guys like devonta <laughs> smith where people are like i i hate devonta smith or just like guys who go out there and they give you you know dj Moore. Uh, yeah they just give you like normal numbers every week for the most part they might give you a couple dud weeks a season where you're like ah man he came he went out and he scored me four points and now i hate him it's like yeah. relax bro like these guys are good football players i think Devonte, there's uh, there isn't a single dynasty team that i have contending rebuilding whatever where i wouldn't consider Devonte as a, a key piece that i would want to have on my roster so he's like so when you say that that makes me think about um our what you just said like a few trades ago about Jalen waddle and how you will buy low right yeah. now just because the production isn't there doesn't mean that the football player isn't good like yeah especially if you could connect something going on with an offense or circumstances to why he's not putting up numbers Jalen Waddle or Devonta Smith they don't just wake up that one day and like wake up looking at him and be like I'm trash and then go to a football field and just proceed to be trash there's things going on in the offense it looks like the Eagles at the it looks like the Eagles situation at Devonta Smith is pretty similar the production is more boring is similar because Saquon Barkley is having a historic season it's as simple, as simple as that so he's eating into the production I'm pretty sure AJ Brown's production isn't you know typical AJ Brown production either this is like Saquon's year this Saquon's year he's literally in an MVP conversation as a running back and you know how hard that is so that means that he's gobbling up tons of production so with that said after sitting here thinking about it I'm going to go to Devonta Smith's side but I fully understand that why a contender would do that Henry and Smith that's the perfect package to get if you want to go out and kick your league mates ass going into the fantasy football playoffs 100% yeah I think I think being 
being first in points for is also major context because before getting Henry on the team, he was already number one in points scored. So like now yeah. you add Henry to that roster and Johnny to that roster, you're going to be a, a a monster in the playoffs. Like you should, should have a really good chance. Yeah, you should have a really good chance. Devonta, like I said, I I think he's the best player in the deal dynasty wise. You know, when we're talking about long term dynasty value, Devonta is the best player in the deal for me. I would do the deal. You know, you could take Jalen Warren out of the deal and I still probably make it, you know, Henry and Janu for Devonta. Like Warren's like, I, he's so non important in the deal to me. I'd yeah, probably man. still do it without him. So um, that said, man, like I'm just going to go back to it. You brought it back up with the Jalen Waddle. Like these, these assets that people are bored of Chris Olave injured, you know, Devonta Smith, people are bored of him. People are bored of Jalen Waddle, scared of Jalen Waddle at the moment. Like any of those assets, I'm telling you right now, if you can go to those owners who maybe feel a little bit pessimistic about them and you can offer them two seconds, Hey, here's two seconds in this year's class. I'm doing it a hundred times out of a hundred times. Do that. Go offer those, you know, double second packages, go offer, you know, your whatever, maybe 26 first round pick and go get Devonta. I think you can buy these guys so cheap at the moment and you can offer draft capital two years down the road or you can offer you know two second round picks or you know a late second and three thirds and maybe get somebody to bite on it it's it's gonna have to take like the right owner i mean i'm talking about trying to buy really really cheap but this is what i would be trying to do is i'd be trying to go buy them cheap at the moment because i think some people will get off of them for cheap um let's go to this next trade we got this longer uh deal there's a lot of a pick fluff in the bottom but yeah, 10 it teams, is. it's one quarterback, so not super flex. Keep that in mind. One quarterback league, full PPR, tight end premium. Team number two was eliminated from the playoffs. They trade away Drake London. They get Chris Olave, Xavier Worthy, two second round picks in 2025, and a third round pick in 2025. So you're basically tearing down. You're getting Worthy in all those seconds. How you feel about that? This is probably a fair deal, to be honest, for Drake London. I understand his pick fluff in there, but those two seconds, that, that, <laughs> that's funny. This is the exact two second this is the ex this is kind of like a form of what you're just talking about except for you're getting a stud wide receiver because yeah. you got instead of trading the two seconds for a lave you're trading the two seconds and a lave to get an even bigger piece and you're throwing in worthy and a third so i mean i feel like man i'm trying to determine well how do you see the value to this trade because on the surface it looks like a fair trade but i want to make sure that i'm not like yeah i mean look i could talk about this from both angles from the first angle if you're in a 10 team league and your team number one, who is obviously contending in playoffs, I'm more than happy to give you my Chris Olave, who's not playing football right now. Xavier Worthy, who's fairly underwhelming, yeah. and two second round picks. I'm assuming one of them is my own second round pick, so it's projected to be late, you know? Right. So I'm willing to give you those to go get Drake London and keep running at this championship because I feel like even long term, it's not like I'm buying an old asset that's, you know, going to depreciate right. in value. Drake London's going to be a young guy that keeps playing ball. Um, yeah. On the opposite side, team number two that just got eliminated from playoffs. Hey, here's a tear down from London to Alave, but I'm also going to get some ammo this offseason to play with. You know, I could trade you Xavier Worthy for somebody else. I could go get a second round running back and then maybe also trade my other second to go get another piece. You know, maybe use those two seconds, like I said, to go buy a Devonta Smith or a Jalen Waddle. Like, you get a lot of ammo with that because if i'm telling you right now you trade those two seconds in that third or maybe those two seconds in worthy and you go get jalen waddle and it's chris olave jalen waddle and and uh you know chris olave jalen waddle and a third for london you're probably what taking the olave and waddle side yeah yeah so i think you just get more ammunition you get more flexibility on that back end side um but then again like i said if i'm the contender getting drake london that's who i want i don't want olave in a contending window i don't want worthy in the contending window right now because those guys aren't scoring me points bingo <laughs> nothing else huh that's just you just said you yeah, summed man. it up like you you just preached you just preached that shit straight out of the good book man like <laughs> i'm like i'm like shit all i can really add to that is bingo shit b-i-n-g-o shit hey. Like, <laughs> hey like you hit the nail on the head man i love drake london man and you know chris olave i know i kind of was talking shit about him like in, in in prior trades but i think this is just a very like fair deal and like you hit the angles from both sides you could flip the rest of that fluff you could if you could flip xavier worthy and the rest of those picks to go get another guy that you could buy on now you have that guy and chris olave like there's like a lot of different ways you would hit this for and he's adding drake london going into the playoffs like yep. now, did these these trades had to happen before like because i'm like these trades didn't just happened this is this is before the deadline because i'm like man so so i well i told people i said 
if you've made any trades over the last two weeks, drop them in the Discord. So yeah. most of these have been made within the last two weeks. Keep in mind, some people's trade deadline isn't until week 14. Some people don't even do a trade deadline in Dynasty yeah. League. So like, Which is bad practice. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I believe that you should have, at minimum, I don't mind if you do your, you know, your trade deadline at the end of the regular season. Like once the regular season is over, your deadline's done, you cannot be trading in the playoffs, bro. That is insane behavior to be trading yeah. in the playoffs. But whatever. We've had some loose cash cannons in our league that would sabotage the i don't think like we've had it before people sabotage sabotage the league at the end of the season <laughs> god damn it but yeah i mean that so these trades have been made over the last couple of weeks is, is what i'm saying they've all been made within the last like two weeks so um look I love it for both sides. This is a good deal. You know, both both parties, it makes sense for both sides. Everybody wins. Um, and I think both teams have a lot of flexibility for what they want to accomplish. So a uh, good deal there. This is the next deal. You saw the thumbnail. Nuck, if you buck, we got Bucky Irving. Uh, 12 team super flex full PPR start 11. The first is in that three to six range. So you get the 103 to the 106. You got Keenan Allen, Jalen Polk, and a 2025 first round pick being acquired for Cedric Tillman and Bucky Irving. War, you trying to hold back the smile because this is this is where we started the episode almost an hour ago. <laughs> Uh, so you're going to have to repeat what you said. How you feel about this deal, bro? <laughs> um, okay, so I feel like Keenan Allen, he's he's ha he's on the upward trajectory for this season. Jalen Polk, he's an inconsistent wide receiver, hasn't really shown anything. And that first round pick is paramount. It's a top end pick. You're getting that. Now, we understand that Bucky Irvin, you know, he's balling out these last few weeks. Cedric Tillman, in his second year, Cedric Tillman, he, um, you know, he showed some signs, even though he's been hurt here late um i'm gonna go ahead and lean the side of the first round pick because really when you break it all down if you would you trade a first round pick for bucky irvin you absolutely would well we wouldn't trade we if we could get a, a first round pick for bucky irvin we would do it i think i could speak for you on that right um yeah. and i'm definitely doing it if i could get keenan allen and Jalen pope for cedric tillman like i'm kind of i'm i'm kind of dead Cedric tillman hasn't shown me enough to suggest that he's more valuable than an ascending uh Keenan Allen he just has it um so that's just kind of where I'm at with that I'm going to lean the side of a uh, team one here okay yeah I mean I think for me like it, it comes down to a few things obviously Bucky Irving he's been playing lights out and you know everybody loves Bucky Irving right now he's uh this month's favorite flavor for the dynasty community it feels like every month we have a new favorite flavor Bucky Irving is the flavor of the month for us right now um I this is a guy who's a later round drafted running back. You know, you're telling me that you're getting a first round pick in that that has the potential to go all the way up to that 103. I'm I'm okay giving you the Bucky Irving flavor of the month for the chance of the 103 here, the 104, the 105. Uh, Cedric Tillman, I think he's a good player. Um, I think he's going to be okay over the next couple of weeks. Obviously, long-term question marks about, you know, is Deshaun Watson still going to come back next year and be the quarterback? If Deshaun Watson mm -hmm. is a quarterback, is that a big mess for, for everybody there? And if it's not him, then who is it? You know, because I don't think they would pay Jameis Winston to be there long-term. Um, Keenan Allen, it feels like if you're getting the first-round pick and you're trading contending pieces away, getting Keenan Allen doesn't make sense because he's old as hell. I mean, this man is that man is grandpa material at this point almost. And so yeah. it, it doesn't make sense there. And I feel like if you were contending buying Keenan Allen, I'd rather just have Bucky Irving and Cedric Tillman on the contending roster. So I think there's a little bit here where all the pieces are not adding up for me. Uh, but at the end of the day, when I'm looking at value, the uh, the dynasty sex appeal you know, the the attractiveness rating would go to the right side where you get Bucky Irving and Cedric Tillman. I think there's more value on the left side with uh, 2025 first in that 103 range and Keenan Allen. Um, although I would say you'd probably be fl uh, flipping Keenan Allen here pretty quickly if it was me. Yeah, yeah. Or you could have just kept Cedric Tillman and, you know, Take just Keenan had out the deal. Traded up, yeah, just trade the first straight up for Bucky Irving. Yeah. And then just probably. leave it at that. But um, but yeah, man, I'm I'm with that first round pick. Um, I know in this show we've we've talked about the different level of value for this draft's first round. But I think um, if, especially if you're in the top three picks, you have significant more chances of finding a player that's better than Bucky Irvin up there. If you could get um Genty or um McMillan or one of those other guys, I, I, I yeah Shador. How, how the hell do I forget Shador? I, 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 I think I think I think I hate Shador. Um, Travis Hunter. I, 
think, oh, Travis Hunt now. Now, that's a different story. That's a different story. There's some guys. There's some guys up there. I, I, I threw that term out there. Can we make that? Is that going to catch on? Dynasty sex appeal? Is that going to catch on? Or is that we're going to throw that one away? Man, man, Andrew, man, I think that might be the name of a show. Dynasty sex appeal. And we, I, we might have something there. Maybe p- people in the comments let us know if that's a term we could catch on. Uh, <laughs> we'll go to this trade here. I think this is the last one of the video. Uh, 12 team super flex PPR and tight end premium. Team number one said that they're fighting to make the playoffs. They are trying to get into the playoffs right now. So they receive Jordan Love, Kyle Pitts, and Kyron Williams. They trade away Kyler Murray, Cooper Cup, and Trey McBride. It's an interesting trade because there's a lot of floating pieces around here. There's some big names. It's it's you have everything that you need too. A tight end for a tight end, a running back, and the wide receiver swap, and then the QBs. How do we feel about this deal, man? Uh team one's fighting to make the playoffs. I think he just lost the fight. <laughs> he lost the fight. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it. Okay, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. There's a lot of production. All these players are productive. You would agree, right? Agree, all yeah. All, are, well. Not not all of them. Kyle Pitts. I'd say all productive. of them except a guy named Kyle Pitts might be productive. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Man. I think he lost the fight because let's, let's do it shot for shot like we like to do. If I'm putting Jordan Love up against Kyler Murray, at worst. I like Jordan Love. I like Jordan Love, but you could also say it's closer to a watch. Yeah, than, I, just, than, I than, actually than just updated um, I actually just updated my dynasty rankings uh, yesterday. I sent them to Marshall, and I'll tell you, um, I have Jordan Love as my QB nine. Kyler Murray is my QB ten. Yeah, they're back to back. Yeah, it's a, it's a wash. It's a wash. But then when you get to the rest of the trade, oh my God, who do you want to put McBride up against? Like to be fair, it, I think it it's only to be fair like to McBride, McBride and Kyron. And, yeah, I think it's only fair to do that. And is it t- is tight end? It's tight end premium, so you probably want McBride. You probably want McBride. And then when you just get to Cooper Cup versus Kyle Pitt, I probably just want. Cooper Cup. Yeah, so I mean, if his goal is fighting for the playoffs and this is the trade he made, my brother, good luck. Yeah, I I agree with you here. Um talking about players that are overhated, I think Kyler Murray's one of them as well. Uh yes. look, it hasn't been the year that I thought it would be for Kyler Murray. Um it's been a little bit slower trying to get it ramped up with Marvin Harrison. Yeah. Trey McBride is balling his ass off and i i want to apologize earlier in the episode i said if you don't have brock bowers and you don't have george kittle it doesn't matter if you don't have trey mcbride you don't have brock bowers and you don't have george kittle it doesn't matter i forgot trey mcbride when i said that i should not because he is tight end two in all of dynasty it's brock bowers and it's trey mcbride point blank period um he has been absolutely balling and he hasn't been scoring touchdowns in your tight end premiums he's just getting 10 receptions a game you know, uh, for 150 yards. Like, it feels like he's just going nuts. Kyler Murray and Jordan Love, they feel like they're low-end QB1s most week. Kyler Murray has more rushing upside. Jordan Love, he's going to throw for more yards and more touchdowns most likely. So if you're in a six-point passing touchdown or whatever, there you go. And interceptions, there you go. Uh, And then Cooper Cup and Kyle Pitts, like we said, it is what it is. I like Kyron Williams the rest of the way. I'm a little bit, a little bit, little bit nervous about Blake Corum. I know Corum hasn't been a big issue. Um, over the last year for the most part but last week he saw his highest snap share it feels like they're kind of just looking hey what do we got in Blake Corum you know I, we want to see him on the football field a little bit more and if they do see him on the football field a little bit more a lot of why Kyron Williams has been valuable is because of the volume and if the volume mm-hmm. goes away I'm a little bit nervous about Kyron Williams if they start going to a little bit more of a committee and uh, one other thing about Kyron Williams that worries me a tiny bit is that ever since Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua have both been back in the lineup uh, Matthew Stafford is throwing the football in the red zone more than he was all year long so less Kyron Williams running touchdowns have been happening ever since those guys have gotten healthy so that's a little bit nerve-wracking too because if Kyron Williams is not scoring touchdowns in the red zone I mean now we're getting into danger zone with him because he needs to get into the end zone for us to feel very good about him uh I I think you're right man look when it comes to fighting for the playoffs if I need guys that I think are going to help me get in I'm taking McBride Kyler and Cup I think those guys help me get in more than the guys on the left side uh but at the end of the day it's fair enough that I'm not I don't think you like go away upset about the takeaway I just think that you have, uh, I think the upgrade that you got, which was Kyler Murray to Jordan Love, I just don't believe it's that significant of an upgrade to significantly downgrade Trey McBride to Kyle Pitts. I think Kyron and Cooper Cup, you probably upgrade, you know, long-term value, but also at the same time, like they could be a wash and and I don't really care. Should have just kept what you had, man. I want to apologize to Trey McBride too, because since we started doing this show last season, I've basically just dis- disregarded this man and disrespected this man. Remember that? Yeah. Just, uh- 
<laughs> basically said Trey McBride ain't shit. Trey McBride definitely is shit. I even drafted him in redraft. So yeah, Trey McBride, I am sorry. Um, I'll give you the same Dog. apology. I had to give George Lo- Jordan Love. Um, even though Jordan Love still sucks just because he's a Packer, but he <laughs> um, but I, I'm willing to admit admit that Jordan Love is not like trash in general, and Trey McBride is also not trash. So so yeah, yeah my apologies to those gentlemen. McBride is a dog man uh but i think that is it that is the last trade of the day um so you're taking the kyler in the cup side the mcbride side i am as well that'll take us to the final uh part of this video but really there's nothing else so for the folks at home want to let you know we are going to do one more dynasty trade show before this is over with uh I do want to mention that that will happen in two weeks. So make sure that you are tuned into that. Uh, Make sure you are in the Discord because if you are in the Discord, you will get those um, channels where you can submit the trades and then you will be good to go. So make sure you do that. Sorry, I was was trying to figure all that out while also my headphones died. So now my computer audio is going to come out. But a good thing we're at the end of the video. So we should be good. Uh, But that being said, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you do all that YouTube stuff to support the show. And uh, War, where can they find you at if they want some additional content? (laughs) We did the show yesterday. It would have been looking dicey. Um, you can find me at Crimson Mask Pro Wrestling, where we talk about WWE primarily, sometimes AEW, depending on the situation. Um, if you become a member um, and all those fancy things, we will make you priority exclusive content with your opinion we'll make a video just for you just give us a shout um crimson mass pro wrestling pro wrestling with attitude hell yeah man so there we have it folks uh that is it for today's episode as always if you enjoyed the content do that stuff like i said we have nothing else for you today we'll see you on the next episode till then peace out